Chief Operating Officer. This call is now being recorded. Of an SME based in Gandhi Nagar, Gujarat. He jump started growth and laid the foundation for high value scale of the business. With real world experience, he can help, mentor, and guide young entrepreneurs in the following ways strategies and fine tune business models, plan and operationalize pilot program. Production design and scale up. Financial modeling to help create a viable business plan. Market study and estimation. Obtaining customer feedback and insights. Motivating employees and building an ownership or empowered culture. Targeting business presentations, whether it is for obtaining new clients raising money or for finding acquisition partners. Being a life coach to bolster confidence and weather the stress of entrepreneurs. So once again, a warm welcome, dear sir. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for that. Uh, Murli sir, before we start with your session, I would like to just update you the purpose behind these webinars that we have had, we have, we have been having uh, from this year onwards. We started uh, student e-cell and uh, we started this in the first year itself. So we have around 60 students who have enrolled for under e-cell, that is the entrepreneurship cell at Don Bosco College of Engineering. And uh, Principal Ma'am has initiated that we need to start a course for these students. So we started a course called Entrepreneurship Idea to Startup, which is a three-year course, which, which the inputs related to that has been given and guided us by FIRE. That's Mr. Prashant. And uh, we've been having these webinars and these sessions along with some activities only for the e sales students with the hope that after three years of this course and once they pass out, we're going to have probably 60 entrepreneurs that will emerge from this particular uh, initiative that is taken up by Don Bosco College of Engineering. So this is the main purpose that we every Saturday at 3.30, we have uh, these sessions lined up for them. So that is the purpose of this particular webinar, Murli sir. Okay. So over to you, sir. Over to you now. Okay. Um, have you opened it up for presentation for me? Want me to present it, sir? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, are you able to see my screen now? Yes, yes. Yes, we are able to see your screen. Okay. All right. So, yes. first of all, uh, thank you very much for for the fantastic introduction and thank you uh, avila for inviting me in the first place uh, i hope uh, what i'm about to present is uh, is useful and and uh, something can be gained from it uh, i have presented a similar um, uh, session to don bosco engineering so i don't know if there are any students that are repeating this if so they might find a lot of the content to be repeat but there is enough changes uh, in my presentation that uh, hopefully even they will get something out of it. So, so today's presentation uh, is on ide ideation, opportunity, and innovation. And I'll also have a small section on, on the art of pitching. Um, and I'm hoping that the presentation will be done in about an hour, maybe even less than an hour. But uh, <clears throat> you know, certainly we'll have plenty of time at the end for questions. So I encourage everybody to um, to ask questions. Uh, you know, I don't know the protocol you need to follow. You know, write it down or type it in. And uh, Avila would uh, appreciate if you can collect the questions at the end and and direct the question and answer session if that's okay with you. Sure, sir. Sure. Absolutely fine. Okay. All right. So let's start the presentation. So first of all, I want to talk about what an idea is. You know, um, everybody knows this. Everybody has also hopefully heard the term that ideas are a dime a dozen. Uh, having said that, though, a good, good ideas are still pretty rare. 
And so what makes an idea a good idea? In my word, in my opinion, in a word, I would say it's follow through. Lots of people have ideas and, you know, there are lots of people can throw around ideas. And the reason we call, we say the ideas are a dime a dozen is because not, not many people are actually willing to follow through on that idea. But anybody who's willing to follow through and actually follows through on a good idea, that's what actually makes the idea a good idea. So what's the difference between an idea and an opportunity? <clears throat> Well, an idea simply is a thought or a concept for a product or a service. Now, in the context of entrepreneurship, I'm saying this, that if you have an idea for a product or a service, you know, that, uh, you know, if you have a thought, that's an idea. An opportunity is the flip side of that. If there is a problem or an unfulfilled need or desire, and somehow your idea attacks that you know that that opportunity then that's when a a seed for a venture is formed so opportunity is what is needed idea is how to fulfill that need or opportunity is a problem an idea is a solution to that problem okay a little bit about idea generation Okay, assuming there is an opportunity, uh, whether it's a, it's a problem to be solved or whether there is an unfulfilled need to be fulfilled, uh, one of the best ways to generate ideas is brainstorming. Uh, everybody has hopefully heard of this. There are, you know, we can actually talk a lot of details about brainstorming. But the best way to do this is to gather a diverse team of uh, team to suggest ideas. And when I mean, what I mean by diverse is this. Uh, <clears throat> if you try to get a whole bunch of technical people, only, only technical people to solve an idea, you will only get technical ideas. You need to have a group of people that can approach that problem from different angles. And that is, that is the best way to generate some of the best ideas. And then you, you know, initially you want to just gather all these ideas. You don't want to shoot down an idea when an idea is presented by anybody, but you collect all these ideas and towards the end, you try to refine it. You will find that one idea by itself is not the perfect idea. When you combine a couple of ideas, you combine aspects of a few ideas, and then you refine that idea a little bit, then you end up with the best, best idea that you can move forward on. Okay, the other way for idea generation, in, you know, with or without brainstorming, is to ask and observe. So the first question you want to ask is, if there is a problem, then the first thing you want to see is, you know, I'm sure others have had a similar problem, or other people have solved a similar problem. How have they done it? It may not be in the exact same field as that you're looking at, but they may have done it in another field, but you want to learn from that. You want to see how I can adapt an idea. An idea is not necessarily, the best idea is not necessarily something that is absolutely brand new. You, typically, the best idea is one that just tweaks somebody else's idea a little bit to adapt spe to your specific condition. So there's a lot you can learn by just simply asking the question, how have others solved similar problems? The third approach, obviously, is to study and experiment. And by study, I mean, you know, obviously, you, you could study other people's solutions. You could study in, you know, in theory. If nobody has solved a similar problem, then you could study the theory behind that, that problem. And, and then you experiment. Okay, so initially, you may not get the, the perfect idea, but you may have some thought and saying, okay, let's try it. And when you try it, you know, it may... It very rarely works the, correctly the first time. But what you learn from that trial is, hey, this, this is where I went wrong. If I modify this or if we modify that, then, then we, we may have a, an implementable idea. And so study and experimentation is, is another way to generate a, a business idea. And, and the last one is try and tweak. It's, again, it's a, it's a twist to the previous one. You know, you take an idea, 
and you try it's never the per never perfect the first time as i just said it takes multiple targeted trials so assume from the get go that no matter what idea you pick and no matter how rigorously you pick that idea you're going to have to try and tweak that you know you 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 run trials you learn from those trials and you'll adapt and you'll you'll change slightly and you'll you know apply a, a, a few of the learnings from the first trial and then you'll keep on going that way so what is innovation <clears throat> innovation is something that solves a real problem okay typically we 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 find you know a, a innovation is is a term we apply to a novel application or a, it it may be a novel idea or it may be a novel application of an old idea okay <clears throat> innovation has to be implemented it can't be a thought it can't be it can't be something in concept alone okay to be to to have an innovation you have to implement it and not only implement it an innovation has to be sustained so it's not just a, a flash in the pan type of thing if it is an innovation it can it it needs to be sustained so there are two terms that are sometimes used interchangeably but they're not interchangeable words invention versus innovation so what is invention typically invention is something we say invention is discovery it doesn't necessarily solve a problem okay it's just new understanding new knowledge new technology you know it's just learning how it eventually is going to be useful to you is at that at the time of invention is not necessarily always clear okay so invention is just something new that you've learned so it improves your understanding it creates new technology etc innovation on the other hand is application of invention to solve specific problems okay so innovation could be you know it could be a complicated uh, application of of you know, very sophisticated technology or it could be an application of simple technology but it is basically innovation is application invention is learning that's the key difference between the two to me <clears throat> and finally you know innovation is a creative process that applies inventions to solve problems is probably the best way to uh, to summarize this thing so let's talk about innovators what are the typical traits of innovators okay the first thing these you know these are some things that you know in my opinion you you can observe in innovators you see that innovators are usually not happy with the status quo they're constantly looking at the world around them and trying to figure out how to improve something you know <clears throat> it frustrates them to see things done in an inefficient way or it frustrates them to see that problems are not resolved so they are basically you know people that are uh, are not satisfied not satisfied with the status quo the second thing is not not only are they not satisfied but they have the ability to channel that frustration into creative juices okay so they not not only looking at problems you know a lot of people are frustrated by problems but innovators then basically take that frustration saying okay i need to do something about this how can i do how can i solve this problem innovators are also willing to take risks and fail because most innovations don't happen the first time around we've said this several times already in this presentation this is one of the key things that everybody needs to remember innovators will take risks and they will fail and instead of getting dejected they will basically learn from that and try it again okay so they are not easily discouraged by failure in fact failure is a given for innovators you know you don't succeed until you try several times so that stubbornness to continue continue to try continue to learn from failures and continue to apply that learning to to new solutions is that stubbornness is a key trait of 
of innovators. So where do inspiration for innova innovators comes from? Okay, so we have already mentioned observe and learn. So this is, this is another key trait. You will find innovators look at something and their natural curiosity basically, you know, makes them ask, how does it work? You know, how, 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 how is it that it's working in nature? How does nature solve these problems? Okay, nature is a great place to learn, you know. Um, if, if, if you are, you know, here's a, a picture of a butterfly, but we all know that flight was discovered basically by observing nature. You know, how do birds fly? How do butterfly, butterflies fly? You know, and then we come up with modifications of that and create aeroplanes and drones and, and helicopters, etc. So nature is a great place to learn from. And uh, innovation, innovators in different industries. So you could observe the innovations that has happened. And so maybe you're interested in solving a problem in, in you know, in biotechnology, but you could look at other fields and say, how does that happen? You know, in, in those fields, how have they approached it? Because there's a lot of similarities, okay? Uh, innovators are also willing to study, you know, it's not only about, you know, observing, but it's also about understanding what you observe. So that really typically requires some understanding of theory. It requires some analysis. So observe, study, analyze, okay? So theory is, is important. And then the last bullet that I have, another great place to learn from is look at patents, other people's patents. And, you know, and I mentioned one particular thing, it's, a, it's it, this TRIZ is a, is a system of analysis of patents. So if you ever Google this, you know, if you want to study patents, it link, it puts patents in, existing patents in boxes of this this patent is about this so it's it's it gives a nice framework of which patent you should look for depending on what type of problem you're you're, you're going to solve okay <clears throat> so what does successful innovation need okay <clears throat> obviously the, the first thing is a, is a new idea or approach. You know, I, I, I didn't mention one thing here and it's kind of given, but first, first thing is you need a problem to solve or you need an unfulfilled need to fill, okay? Then you need an idea, a new idea or a new approach to, to do that. And once you have that, you, you need a detailed plan for implementation. So we have said this many times, an idea or approach is great, but unless you implement it, it's not an innovation. So you need a plan for implementation. Lastly, you need multi-skill team. You know, it's everybody thinks that innovators are single. You know, in a single individual has all the in all the skills needed to to uh, to create that innovation, and it's not true. Most innovations are driven by a key innovator, but that innovator surrounds himself or herself by with people that have skills in other areas, a skills in areas that they don't specifically have. And it takes that multi-skill team to, to bring an innovation to life. And then finally, of course, it also requires support from innovation ambassadors. So you may have the skills, but you'll need people to help you navigate through other areas like financing, like marketing, like regulations like legal issues etc so you need ambassadors as well <clears throat> so who are innovation ambassadors um, enablers uh, one type of ambassadors so people that have the technical skill the marketing skill the liaison skill etc that we have mentioned okay investors are another type of ambassadors so these are people that provide financial support. And third type of ambassadors are what we call early adop adopters. So early adopters provide two functions. You know, they obviously they provide the function of troubleshooting your initial, you know, like beta testing. So they allow you to improve your product and make it market ready. Uh, 
they also are influencers in today's uh, world you know social media influencing is a is a is a key to success so early adopters can be influencers and they can they can influence other people to adopt your product or service so fire as you all know is since it's housed in don bosco uh, it's it's an incubator and FIRE can help connect innovators to ambassadors. So if anybody wants to become an entrepreneur, they have a, you know, an idea to solve a problem, and you know, they basically decided this is the path that they want to take their career, I encourage you to approach FIRE and you know, seek all the help that they can provide you. Impactful innovation. <clears throat> so to create an impactful innovation, the more critical the application, the more impactful the innovation. Okay, so if you if you found a problem that is critical, it 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 the second part of that is it reaches multiple, you know, a large audience. Large audience can associate themselves with that particular problem. Then you know uh, it's it's both critical, it has a large reach, um, and then you create if you make the innovation such that it is easily adoptable okay how easily can people use it so adoption is is, a, is is creates impact impactful innovation and then finally resistance is that you know it will resist people's uh, uh, <clears throat> negative feedback meaning there's a lot of resilience to that in, in innovation and also the negative consequences, the unintended consequences are few. And what I mean by this is, you know, you may have come up with a great product um, that's, you know, let's say it's a food item, it's a great product, it uh, tastes really good, it's healthy, it's nutritious, it's, um, but then it's packaged in, in this plastic packaging that is hard to dispose of, that creates resistance sometimes. Um, so if you can come up with a solution for that, then again, you, you improve your innovation. <clears throat> so I would say, you know, for even for student projects, when you think about how can I make my project impactful, think in those terms. How critical is my application? How, how many people can it reach? How easily can it be adopted? And how can it resist negative influences or negative consequences? Types of innovation. <clears throat> so I've got a diagram here called the innovation wheel. You know, this is not uh, my idea. It's a it's a proprietary um, <clears throat> um, uh, model. Uh, I think Deloitte um, Deloitte owns this model now. Uh, it was started by a company that Deloitte eventually ended up buying. Uh, so I'm going to you know it it talks about you know ten types of innovations but it is boxed into three three basic types and they call it experience configuration and offerings i'm going to make it a little bit simpler <clears throat> so i see innovation as front end innovation which means innovation that changes the user experience in a unique way okay it impacts the customer you know the, the users of the products or service immediately see this innovation it's it impacts them then there is back-end innovation where the front end might not change at all. The customers might not at all be aware of this innovation, but it changes the operation, the back-end, how the product or service is, is, is delivered, how the product or service is created, and as a result, how the, the profit model changes. So it impacts the organization's profitability and organization's ability to succeed, but it doesn't necessarily impact the front, you know, the customer base. So that's a back-end innovation. And then the third one is what I would call a twist. So a twist is basically, you know, it's not something new and, and, and revolutionary, but it takes an existing product or service and puts a slight twist to it and creates a whole new product or service. And an example would be, you know, um, let's talk about Amazon. Everybody knows Amazon. Uh, Amazon was originally an online bookstore. 
Okay, then they realized that a slight twist to that is I could they could sell other things. So then they started selling other things. And then they realized that they were using so much data and they had so much cloud uh, capacity that they said, hey, I could sell this cloud service to other people. So that started the AWS, the Amazon, um, Amazon Web Services. Today, Amazon Web Services makes more money for Amazon than anything else. You know, and the book sales are a really minute portion of their overall revenue. So they just kept twisting the original innovation to where now they've become more successful with the twist rather than the original innovation. So from idea to implementation, <clears throat> this is to summarize, an idea is not an innovation unless implemented. Okay. Two, implementation needs leadership and support. And three, pitching garners support. Okay, so we haven't talked about pitching so far, so I wanted to introduce that. So what is pitching? Pitching is communicating your idea with clarity and enthusiasm. So far, we've been talking about, you know, what is the idea, what is the problem, how to create an innovation, etc. But we also said that it's really important for us to gain ambassadors to support your idea. Okay, well, in all this, we haven't talked about how do you communicate your idea to these ambassadors? How, how do, you know, how do, how, how do you pitch your idea forward to other people? So, Communicating an idea with clarity and enthusiasm, projecting a vision for your idea so other people become just as enthusiastic about your idea as you are, supporting your vision with your practical ability and experience. So not only do you have vision, you need to show that you are the right person to be able to deliver this vision and into and to make this vision come to, come to life. Showing facts and figures to prove feasibility and connecting emotionally with ambassadors to make them part of your fan base. So I've got a couple of, if, of examples of effective pitches. So, and I try to pick ones which is, you know, short and sweet and, 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 and product or service that we might be easily able to relate to. So the first one is, about Airbnb, Airbnb, you know, this pitch that I'm going to show you is, <clears throat> let's see if I can make this big, all right. Okay, so Airbnb had existed for a while and I think this was a pitch they were using to do, you know, for a second or third round of investment. And so it's really short and sweet, you'll see, all right, what is the problem? The first thing they say, this is the problem we are trying to solve. The problem is there is, you know, price is an important customer concern for customers and hotels leave you disconnected from the, from, from the city and its culture. No way, no way exists to book a room with a local or become a host. So that's where they started. Okay, solution. Again, if you notice these slides, they're not cl cluttered at all, simple, okay. So a web platform, save money, make money, share culture. What is the market validation? What is the feasibility? You know, then they provide numbers to show that, you know, they've got an idea that is, that is very feasible. Then they show how much of that they've been able to get, how much of that market they've been able to grab already. Then they talk a little bit about what their product is and how it is used by the customer. Then they say a little bit about their business model. How are they going to make money from this? Then they talk about market adoption and compare it to others that are in similar or, or related services. So uh, talk, talk a little bit about the competition. Then they talk a little bit about their competitive advantages. And that's it. And so if you look at, you know, in, in basically uh, 10 slides, they've been basically able to bring their idea, 
bring their idea to life. Here's another one. So this is a, a company basically, <clears throat> I don't know how many people are aware, but Vietnam has got some fantastic coffee. And for one reason or the other, it's, it has not, it, they, they have not yet been able to make this, you know, uh, available worldwide. And <clears throat> so a couple of women decided it was, it was time. They were of Vietnamese heritage they lived in America, they said, hey, America needs to, we need to bring Vietnamese coffee to America. So why Copper Cow? And so they have a personal connection. They're showing why it is, you know, why they are en entering this business area. Okay. <clears throat> Simple. What is the product? It's Vietnamese coffee. They talk about their strengths in supply chain. They talk about how they've already succeeded in getting 2000 plus stores to stock their products. Now a little bit about the market opportunity. How big is the market? And, and they also, you know, how can, how can they expand that market beyond just stores to office and hotel and e-commerce? What, how much revenue they've been able to generate so far and what, how much money they're ma making on that revenue. Who's the team? Summary, you get a coffee, great coffee, great margins, and that's it. So again, you know, in very simple terms, they're able to pitch their idea and get people excited about their product. You know, I'm obviously not, not doing justice to these presentations, but what I'm trying to show here is the presentation itself is very simple. Okay, what, how they, how they uh, use it, how they present it is where it, the, 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 the strength of that presentation comes through. <clears throat> so when to pitch, gather support, when you want to gather support from family and friends. I mean, you, you know, when you're talking to family, remember if you're trying to get some money from your from your parents or your, from your rich uncle or your, your whoever it is or some friends, you know, a typical entrepreneurs don't take the trouble to form a pitch. Maybe you don't sit down with a presentation, okay? But if, if at all possible, even when you're talking to your, your close friends and family about your idea and you, you're looking for their support, it would help if you had the presentation prepared. Even if they, if they don't give you the opportunity to actually make a presentation to them, it needs to come across like a presentation. So in your head, you need to go through a presentation so that there's, a, there's, there's coherence to your idea. There's, you know, uh, <clears throat> you need to pitch when you want to expand your team. When you're a startup, it's really difficult to hire very good people. Because, you know, when people are looking for a job, they obviously are looking for security. And to get good people to come become part of your team, you know, you need to get that enthusiasm projected out there. Um, when you need institutional or government grants, you need to make a good pitch. When you need mentors and coaches, you need to pitch the idea to them. When you need money, you need to pitch the idea to investors. And of course, when you need customers, you need to pitch the idea to them. Each type of pitch might be slightly different, tweaked specifically for the audience. But at the end of the day, it's a pitch. And the pitch is about what your idea is, how, why is that a good idea? And how is that good idea going to be successful? Those are the three main important things that you need to bring out in a pitch. So as a summary, there is a book out there, uh, <clears throat> The Art of the Pitch. And I would encourage people to, you know, buy that or borrow that uh, from a library and, and go through it. But here's the summary. First thing it says is when you're pitching your idea, think like the audience. Why are they here? Why are they listening to you? What would excite them? You know, think like the audience. Present rationally, but connect emotionally. 
Okay, you need to get that enthusiasm. They need to, it needs to become infectious. You know, other people need to get the same enthusiasm that you feel. Practice until the pitch becomes natural. Okay, so this seems like a oxymoron, but in fact, it's not. When you say when people, you know, people would say, no, I, I don't want to make this, I don't want to practice this too much because then it comes across as a, as a, you know, um, uh, unnatural, very stiff presentation. If I want to be natural, I, I should just go out there and talk. Well, you know what? The people that seem to be going out there and talking have practiced so much that they have overcome that initial phase of artificialness to become where it becomes natural to them. They know completely what they are presenting and they are easily able to adapt to the situation because they are completely familiar with their pitch. And they are so because they have prepared so much, they have practiced so much that they don't need to be thinking about what they want to say. They can easily focus on how it is being received and, and, and how to change that presentation a little bit in their minds so that it, it's received even better. Great presenters tell stories. We all love stories. Okay, at the end of the day, yes, everybody cares about what's your idea, what's the problem, what's the money, you know, all of that. But the story about how you connect to that and how other people will connect to that is what gets people excited. Use uncluttered slides, make the audience listen to your pitch. You don't want them sitting there reading the presentation. You know, they want, you want them to be listening to you. They, you want them to be looking at you. You want them to, you know, get infected by your enthusiasm. So what's on the screen is just a small bullet. So everybody knows what it is that you're going to talk about. But at the end of the day, you want them to listen to you. <clears throat> Okay, that's my presentation, guys. <clears throat> uh, it's it's not much. Enough time to the slide so people could understand it. If not, I've already sent the presentation to Avila. I'm sure she can share it. With you. But at the end, I want you guys to uh, take away. Uh, homework exercise and uh, you know Don Bosco's faculty will follow up with you um, yeah I know I know your reaction right now uh, oh no homework but still I think it's a good exercise for you to follow up to. Yeah. so simple identify an opportunity that is a problem or an unfulfilled need or desire List some ideas, not just one idea, list some ideas, a few, three to five ideas on how to solve the problem. Then highlight the idea that you have selected as, as what you're going to pursue, okay? Make a simple five-step implementation plan, all right? Tip one, find a good balance between practicality and novel approach, okay? So don't come up with ideas that are pie in the sky, but at the same time, don't come up with a drab, already done type of idea. Come up with something, some new approach to an existing thing or a novel approach, but that's very practical. Two, your entire write-up should be no more than one page. So everything that I've asked you to do here should fit in one page and use what I told you about how to make a good pitch, you know, stick to the key points and put that down on one page, one piece of paper. And uh, and I'm, I'm sure you'll get more instructions from, uh, from, from your faculty on how to, how, how and when to present this. Avila, am I right? You guys are gonna follow up with this? Yes, sir, yes, yes. Yes, okay. Sir. All right. So that is my presentation. <clears throat> and any uh, questions I'll be happy to address or any area that you want me to talk about more, I can go back and, and discuss that further. So I leave that now open to questions and, and whatever else. So I have a question. I have sure. a question. 
in fact it's my it's a, it's a personal question in the sense it's related to me only i have an idea but i don't have okay. money to make it work but i don't have money to make it work can yes. i how do i communicate this idea to a company so that they can make this as a csr activity for them or how do i go about with this but the idea that i have is a idea that can work i mean that can any company can take it up as a csr activity for them and most of the companies have uh, you know they are now into csr they want to do a lot of uh, social responsibility uh, activities so right. how do i go about with this how i mean what should be my approach because i don't have money to finance my idea so right. i so how do i well, yeah so let me ask you this is it yes, just sir. it's an idea you want to pass on to others or it's is it an idea that you want to implement as long as somebody financially supports you i want i want to implement this idea as long as the company supports me financially and it becomes okay. theirs because they are supporting it financially but i want to make it work right okay great yeah. so yeah. first thing i will tell you is this this is like every in individuals entrepreneurial idea okay. anybody who has got an idea for a rent, for a new product or a service typically will find that they don't have the money to make it work okay uh -huh. Okay. So they, from the get go, they will need to try to find somebody to finance them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that somebody initially is simply their parents. Sometimes it is friends and family. So, but friends and family can only support them to a certain point, right? Then they need to find yes. somebody willing to give them more money. Then they need to find somebody who's willing to give them even more money. so it's no different what you're suggesting is no different but one thing is that you've already identified that the people that would be willing to financially support you are corporations with csr csr funds right yes. so yes so i see this as first thing you have to do is make a good pitch okay for your and knowing that your audience is csr do some research on which company csr would be most interested in funding you okay and also think in terms of how will they benefit from this everybody needs a you know all big companies have an obligation for csr and they are always looking for good ideas but more importantly they are looking for good implementers okay so your idea has to not only come as an idea hey you do this it's like i will do this i have the resources to do this in terms of technology in terms of drive in terms of you know everything other than money all i need okay. is financial support from you that most people are willing to listen to if that particular area that you're approaching is attractive to that company so do some research on which companies might be interested in the area where you where, where you have this idea from okay Does that makes sense yes 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 sir definitely yes yes the area in fact i i don't want to move out of goa so it's going to be in goa so i need to target the companies that are there in goa which probably can adopt this and then probably i can be an implementer for that right sir yes exactly okay. and okay. and you can you can you know think in terms of how to excite them and how to get it better implemented you know you could excite some students at don bosco you you know i don't know what the idea is so i'm kind of obviously talking <laughs> Yeah. but you know the more excitement and enthusiasm you can generate from from both the 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 company as well as the people that will be working to implement it the better off yes. you'll be so on a personal level at some time when i'm back at fire you can tell me what it is and yes sir definitely definitely sir yeah definitely i have your number too so in case any time when you come down to fire probably uh, you know we, we can connect sir because uh, this is something which i am very passionate about in fact more than me it's my husband who is passionate about that and i just want to make it work for him that's it <laughs> great great yeah yeah any so, other students any more questions you have for sir students any questions in fact recently you all have done pitching you have uh, participated in idea competition so would you like to ask something to sir with regard to that uh, so i had a question 
Sure. Uh, so how would you go about, um, suppose if you have an idea, mm-hmm. uh, how would you go about the legal aspect of it as in, um, say you're a budding entrepreneur mm-hmm. and you had this idea, how, do you, mm-hmm. how would you go about, uh, you know, uh, claiming your intellectual property and stuff like that? Like, how do you decide when it's time to file a patent or something like that? Right. Uh, see, the, it, this is a, 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 a very complex and detailed area, right? And, and certainly there's a time in your, in your journey, in your entrepreneurial journey, you need to worry about that. Okay. So I'm going to say two things. First of all, don't worry about it in the beginning. Okay. Make it to the, bring up, bring that idea along to the point where you, you see implementation, where you see that there is value that can be stolen by somebody else. Okay. And, but at that point, you, there's, there will be some financial value to your idea. And so I'll just simply say this, you know, obviously it'll take a bunch of legal experts and other people to navigate through the patenting process. But for right now, uh, incubator like fire can help you connect to the right people at very low cost. Okay. So fire has some legal experts that they, that can advise you, et cetera, et cetera. So, and you know, I, my, my general advice to people is at the beginning, don't worry about details like this, but there is a time when you do have to worry about it. By that time, you'll find the right uh, help, the li- right legal contacts, et cetera, through association with incubators, or if you have a lot of money, obviously you can go hire your own lawyer, but I'm sure that's not what you're asking. You're asking, how do I go about it? You know, without the resources that, you know, large companies have. And the answer is simple, you know, approach fire, tell them this is what I've got. And they will tell you, you know, if it is a, if it's a, a budding idea that has, that is not yet patentable, they'll tell you that. Then if it is an idea that has been implemented and or that has been at least piloted and you know it is important that you pa- patent it right now to pro- to to uh, <clears throat> protect your intellectual property then they will be able to guide you on how to do it and who to contact and which other lawyers that can help you okay sir so we have a question in the chat box gauravi is asking we have uh, made a website to post art related stuff, how can we make money out of it? What can be the ways to earn revenue ad sets? She's uh, posted so in the chat it's box. A web, it's a website that has got public information. It's, it's, it, I'm, I'm assuming it's a website that uh, provides uh, some sort of a service to somebody. Uh, so it's about buying and selling just like Amazon, but only we are uh, selling here art related stuff like music uh, or whatever that can be related to art that is some form of art so you're connecting artists to buyers right yes kind of like etsy (laughs) Uh, well you know again without knowing a lot of details my ideas would be very generalized Um, but uh, you know there's obviously two ways to make money one is to take a cut of the transaction okay if if an artist is selling something you know take a cut of that and in order to do that you'll have to basically find a way to make the transaction happen through your website okay the second way is that you charge a fee for people that come on your website whether they are artists or users uh, the third way is you don't charge anybody anything, but you sell ads based on the number of people that are transiting through your through your website. Okay, for all of this, the the last method of of making money through ads, you need to have a pretty large base. Okay, so <laughs> typically, I will tell you others that have created uh, websites like this. You know, initially they just find the funding. As, you know, if, from investors so that they can continue to support your 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 growth. Until you grow to a certain size, it's very difficult to make money from something like this. Okay, so initially, if you can present 
to an investment group or a, uh, an edu- or a grant or some you know a government grant or an incubation grant or something like that to show that how the the future potential is great they might be able to fund you to the point where you increase the number of uh, users in, and increase the traffic through your website and once the traffic gets to a certain size then you can monetize it much more easily yes thank you sir okay uh, so we have sanket who is asking even companies like flipkart were successful until they were brought up by walmart right it's a question that is posted uh, the question is again what uh, even companies like flipkart weren't successful until they were bought by walmart right that is what he's asking so he is he that they were not successful until they were bought by walmart yes it's well, sanket sanket if you could just ask this question to sir directly using your microphone that would be better sanket sanket you can use your microphone please okay his mic isn't working okay 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 all right He's no problem <laughs> no problem i i in fact when you when you say flipkart was not successful maybe what he meant was flipkart was not making a lot of profit success is not necessarily always profit i don't think flipkart is making a lot of profit even now after walmart has bought it okay but when they look at amazon didn't make profits for a long time at the end of the day success is about what you define your goals are for the year right so they had a plan to make profits eventually flip flipkart did too but their main goal initially was growth they needed more and more customers on there obviously they got to a point where the competition from other players especially amazon was getting so stiff and amazon had so much more money that they would get wiped out unless they sold out to somebody with equal amounts of money or at least somebody with deep enough pockets that they could stand up to amazon and so my guess i i don't know the details in at the at, at the very um, uh micro level uh, you know but i'm guessing that they came to a point where they said well they have a platform they have a customer base it's large enough that you know a, another player like walmart finds a lot of value in it okay if if walmart wanted to start something of their own it would take them forever and so walmart eventually bought flipkart out and you know the flipkart founders uh, made a ton of money on this so you know if you say they were not successful that's not true they made a lot of money from selling it to to uh, uh, walmart but when you are you know in a in a in a game or in a, in a sphere where there are mammoth players and the only way you can succeed is you know having the same amount of cloud as other players in your other the com- competitors in your field then you you can't survive unless you have that kind of deep pockets so my answer to you yes. is no i do i do think they were successful but they were not necessarily going to survive unless they sold out to somebody like walmart is yes, thank you sir thank you for that answer Uh, Nishil, do you have a question? Nishil, you have raised your hand. Do you have a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, so I had a question. Yes. Uh, you spoke about uh, uh, an entrepreneur trying to fix any issue with society, or uh, finding any problem and working on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but occasionally, when we tend to target any issue, mm-hmm. uh, we do have. Uh, problems related to revenue and getting uh, stabilized with the startup right so how would we uh, uh okay <clears throat> ensure that we function for at least a longer time yeah that was so, my question it's a good question you know um, so i'm going to go to definition of an opportunity okay so you know it's here i simply say a problem or an unfu- unfulfilled need or desire so let me give you an example uh, okay we say you know our, our rivers and lakes are dirty our water bodies are dirty it's a problem 
All right. And therefore, if I come up with a solution that would be that would create an entrepreneurial opportunity, it should be that way. But the fact that the, the lakes or water bodies are dirty is not necessarily the problem. The problem would be if people are dissatisfied with the fact that the lakes are dirty. If people don't care, then it's not a problem. It's only a problem for you, right? For other people, it's not a problem, all right? So let's say you have a societal issue that you want to take care of, and it could be, you know, clean up the ponds or clean up the streets or, clean, you know, make better roads, whatever it is, okay? You have to, you have to figure out who is this a problem for? And, and whoever it is a problem for, how can they support you in solving that problem? If it's a problem for somebody, then you know they need to be able to to provide the financial resources to for you to you know to to implement that solution. In most of these societal cases, it ends up being it's a problem for the people, but people don't have the resources. It's the government that has the resources. So now we are back to making a pitch. How can you make a pitch to the right people who have the funds to support you, right? So making a pitch is not that easy. Now, you know, you, 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 first of all, you have to make the, the right contacts, you know, find the people that can actually provide you the resources to, if, even if you find the people, how can you convince them that you are the right person or you and your team is the, is the right team to create the solution? Okay, so now it all comes down to presenting that idea, presenting your own skill set, your own enthusiasm to the right people so that you can find the, the financial resources to solve that problem. I, I hope I understood your question right and I've answered it, you know, in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, yes, sir. You have perfectly understood it. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Students, any more questions? Do you have anything more to ask, sir? So, would you like to say something? Give a feedback or whatever? You're asking me? Yes, sir. Yes. Would you like to say something? So, you know, all I can say is this. Uh, first of all, I hope I was um, able to provide a service to you guys that you find useful. Um, uh, as number two, uh, I, I hope all of you sincerely, you know, consider entrepreneurship as something that you would want to do. But keep in mind, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Uh, but at the same time, you know, jobs are not for everybody either. <laughs> so, you know, keep in mind that entrepreneurship requires drive, it requires stubbornness, it requires uh, risk-taking ability, it requires perseverance, but it requires, uh, you know, all technical skills and and all the, you know, art of pitching, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, nobody can tell you if it is right for you or not, except yourself. And a lot of people try entrepreneurship and decide this is not for them. A lot of people try jobs and decide entrepreneurship is for them. But I encourage everybody to think about this as a viable career, career path. It's not necessarily the easiest career path. You don't do this as a default. I can't get a job, so let me start a company. That's not the right approach. Okay. But you need to really internalize this. You know, is this what you want to do? Uh, and joining another startup is not a bad thing. Sometimes, you know, you learn a lot from joining other startups and saying, okay, it wasn't my idea, but, you know, I really like the other person's idea. It was his company, but I'm going to work hard to make that company successful. Then eventually you'll find that, you know, either you become part of that, that team or you become, uh, you know, well-versed in how you can bring your own idea to life. So... We need a lot of that. I think uh, country needs it. Um, and certainly, you know, there's not enough employment opportunity for everybody who graduates. So the more people can create jobs, the better off we'll be. So I highly encourage this. So we have also with us the head of the Science and Humanities Department, Dr. Kala Naik. She's raised her hand. Probably she has a question to ask. Kala okay. 
uh no on behalf of uh, science and humanity department i wanted to thank uh, professor murli dharam that's why i raised my hand avila okay well, ma'am appreciate okay. it very much okay okay thank, thank you ma'am yes thank you ma'am melissa over to you now melissa 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 over to you yes ma'am okay to propose a vote of thanks friends faculty members and our most valued guest mr munli dharan it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the e cell dbc patoda goa i would like to thank our guest also our miss Uh, Avila Naik, Training and Placement Officer, Assistant Professor, Science and Humanity. Once again, thank you to all. Well, thank you from my side for listening to the presentation, and and good luck to all of you. And so, whenever you come towards fire to fire, please do let us know. Probably, if these students are they are there on campus during that time. Uh, I I can speak to Prashant, speak to you, and we can plan a one-to-one -one session for them in the sense in person, a session for them rather than online. Absolutely, I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye, sir. Bye. Bye. students now you can you may leave the class thank you